Hey guys, I want to show you what makes a Power Profiler Kit 2 from Nordic Semiconductor makes itself such a great device and not only for current measurements. And yeah, I don't want to miss it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. A while ago, I got myself the Nordic Power Profiler Kit 2, which I will call PPK2 from now on, as Nordic itself calls it as well this way. This is the perfect device to measure current in the low power range. So it can measure from 200 nano ampere up to 1 ampere and it can measure the current up to 100,000 times a second. Yeah. And it can either be connected in series to your device to the battery or it can be itself be the power supply for such a device like here and it can be set from an output voltage from 0.8 to 5 volt and this is useful if you want to see if your device detects low voltage correctly or if your battery runs out um, in this case it can show a small battery icon or turn itself into a real standby mode where it also will turn on the bluetooth or something so it can be quickly tested with such PPK and yeah it also features a digital input which can, which can be used as a very crude logic analyzer and yeah overall it's very simple to get started you just need one software it's the NRF Connect application I will link it down in the description so you can download or can take a look at it and I want to show you how to get started and what else I am doing with it which makes it more useful in addition to the current measurement. The PCB for this watch project was made by PCBWay which is the sponsor of this video. PCBWay offers high quality but low price PCBs for prototypes and also for real products if you want so. They do also make the stencils and can also do SMT or even 3D print cases. I am very happy with their quality. You can get 10 PCBs for as low as $5 plus shipping. And yeah, I'm, I would order from them even if they would not sponsor this video. To get started, you just have to download the NRF Connect for Desktop app. And to do so, you can scroll down at that page to select your operation system, in my case it's Windows, and then download the newest version of it to your PC or Mac or Linux system. And yeah, after that you have to install it of course, but you will be greeted with the NRF Connect desktop app after that. You then need to install the Power Profiler uh, thingy inside. You have normally the install button, but I already installed it. You can then also open that up. You can now connect the hardware side of things. For once I have here connected plus and minus to the V out pin and to the ground pin of the PPK. And then you can connect the USB or micro USB cable to the USB data slash power port of the PPK. You have to take care that the switch is in on mode if you do it that way and it should be detected on the PC right away. If uh, that was successful you can then select device here in the top left corner. I, For me it took a while to find that you can click this button. I had yeah, expected to have a list directly on the side. But you can click on that and then you will get the list of devices and as you can see the PPK2 is connected and yeah I can select it and there we have the main settings on the left side and on the right side we have the data logger for once of the current and you can also turn on or off the logic analyzer channels you have here on the connector. We have now for once the source meter options option or the ampere meter option and you can see on the PPK that the appropriate light is turning on 
either blue or red so you know in which mode you are. The ampere meter is the mode where you would connect the battery of the project externally and run it through the V in and V out over the positive side of the battery to your project. This is the default state in which it would measure the current which is just flowing through the PPK. In our case now we use the source meter where we can select or give it a voltage we want to output and we can select it in the millivolt range. In this case I will use 3.3 volt or we can even go higher with 4.2 volt. We can also use the slider for that but it's simpler to get round numbers this way. Then we can also directly enable the power output and as you heard the watch turned on and the e-paper display is yeah, working. I will turn on off the power again to keep going through the menu. You can next select the yeah, sampling per seconds which goes from, let's turn it all the way down, from uh, one sample per second up to the 100,000 samples per second. In that uh, range, if you change it, also the um, the time you can maximum record or just yeah, see the current will change as well. So the maximum at 100,000 samples is around 8 minutes, 9 minutes, no, 7 minutes or whatever. And if you go down to 10,000 samples per second, it will increase and so on. It will increase yeah, even more. So if you want the highest precision, you would select the 100,000 samples per second and yeah, and so forth. And there you can of course also select the, the length of it um, to the maximum. But I will go for the 100k samples per second for now. After that you can click start and you will directly have the yeah, lock showing the current consumptions. As the power supply is now turned off you have zero microampere. And I will also turn off the digital inputs to have a bigger uh, screen space. You have per default 7 seconds in the past and you can select some predefined ranges here at the top. And yeah, I will now enable the power output. You heard the clock turning on again and you can already see here the current is rising as the yeah device is updating the screen as the e-paper display is updating. You can see an average here at the bottom of current and what the current uh, currently maximum uh, milliampere was for that range you have selected. I can now also scroll with the mouse wheel to have a wider range and to have not um, the live view so you can look in the past and scroll deeper into some parts for example here was the beeping and you can clearly see how much current the beeping is taking so it's yeah at around uh, 160 milliampere or 170 which is quite a lot so you would want to use the beeper as short as possible also you can see here how the screen updates and even there you can yeah, just scroll into and it will update the average current and the maximum current in that range as well. You can then click back on live view to see the current status and yeah you can clearly see the average current and also you can see how often the device wakes up, what it does. In this case you can see the high spikes are the Bluetooth low energy 
and the smaller spikes here in the bottom is a timer which wakes up the CPU every 40 milliseconds I think it was so that way you can clearly see what the device is doing and of course see the average current quite easily here you have in the right corner now a spike where the partial update of the screen is done you can also clearly see what it is doing in that position which is quite handy this is the basic function now I want to show you what makes the PPK such a useful and a universal device. So I got these e-paper displays here from one brand and different versions. And I know that they do wake up every hour or so to talk to their access point and to update the data. But if you want to instantaneously update the um, shown data or image on them, you have to wake them up externally and if we look closer onto this PCB we can see that here is one antenna and here is another antenna. The whole display is running via Zigbee so 2.4 gigahertz and I needed to search for the correct yeah, wake up signal. To do so I took an NRF 24L01 it's a 2.4 gigahertz RF module and an ESP32 and used it to create an unmodified carrier signal of 2.4 gigahertz and as you can already see the current is increasing or dropping of the e-paper display which I'm measuring with the PPK and that way I knew I was on the right track but I simply could not get it to wake up with this method and after playing around with it I knew that I have to just send a very short pulse of a signal of the yeah, unmodified carrier signal but I already knew at that point that it must be something correct. After I then changed the signal to be only present for about 10 milliseconds, which I'm uploading right now and we should see in a moment, like so, we can see if we only send a very very short signal that the e-paper display is not only updating but you can also see the current and what, what is it, it is doing. So if I now reset the ESP, we can see it's updating again. This was only possible or so easy to find with the PPK. And it's just yeah priceless in that matter to find such things out, especially if you try to reverse an unknown thing like the price tag where you cannot debug it software wise. That's it from me for the PPK2 and yeah I hope you saw why I really love this device and you can get yourself one from different shops you can find it via the NRF or via the Nordic website uh, they have quite a few shops worldwide which sells it and also the other boards from them this video is not sponsored or affiliated by Nordic I'm just loving the device and I'm quite a fanboy by now. Okay, bye, see you next time.